imagine for me uh, taking a, a fire that you would build at a campsite and putting it in your, in your home and cooking macaroni or, or cooking uh, breakfast, cooking oatmeal or something like that. Um, the thing with that is that uh, that's really about how half the world cooks. So uh, three billion people on the planet cook with an open fire to make their uh, normal food. Um, and what happens with that is that cooking with an open fire uh, is very similar to um, smoking three to five packs of cigarettes a day for the people that uh, sit with the, with the stove or with their uh, open fire inside their house. Um, this is often something, this is a picture of a few men uh, cooking posho in Africa, but uh, m most of the time, 85% of the time, the results, the negative results that come from cooking with an open fire uh, are borne by women and children. Um, and I'm sure you can imagine uh, women, uh, well, sorry, children being much more susceptible to pneumonia and other diseases that can come from cooking with an open fire. So um, as an example, uh, high, in the, high in the mountains in Guatemala, in, in the valleys that are there, uh, smoke comes in uh, and, and stays in those little valleys high up in the mountains, and half of the children there get pneumonia every year. Um, so even though the children are loved and cared for, uh, it's a tough thing, but uh, they, many of them get pneumonia and then often the children die. Um, another problem with cooking with the open fire is obviously somebody's got to come up with that fuel. Um, more than half of the developing world uses, uses biomass or, or wood as their primary means to cook. Um, this is a a locate, this, is, this is actually in Haiti, where um, there is no forest anymore. Uh, so what happens is that people truck in charcoal, and this is something that's very common in urban areas around the world. Um, this is actually a picture of, of kind of what happens next. So uh, with deforestation, uh, this is a picture in Haiti where once was a lush forest, now it's uh, de completely deforested. But what's tough now is that it's, it's hard to come back and, and reintroduce plants. Uh, it's, it's gone to the level of desertification. Uh, the other environmental component of, of uh, cooking with an open fire is the, um, not only is it a deforestation problem, but for climate change as well. So although CO2 is a huge contributor to climate change, uh, the, the smoke uh, that, all, that kills the 1.6 million people every year also is a big contributor to, to uh, climate change. Um, CO2 being number one, and then the smoke or particulate matter being a close number two. Uh, it's, it's reported that CO2 is 40% of the contribution, but then uh, smoke or soot or the black carbon is 18% is of that contribution. The positive thing about all that is that uh, CO2 uh, is, is in the atmosphere for decades. So to get that to come out of the atmosphere, the process of photosynthesis has to occur. But what's nice about particulate matter is that although it will go out uh, into the ozone or out into the atmosphere, um, it settles much faster. So something like in introducing an efficient cook stove can take it just a couple weeks to dramatically improve uh, the effects of climate change on the planet. Uh, this is my boss, Dean, uh, and this is our partner at the Shengzhou Stove Manufacturing Facility in, in China. Um, the Oprovecha Research Center has worked uh, since 1976 to um, do the research and design around making an improved cook stove. Um, what defines an improved cook stove uh, is that it reduces the fuel need by 40% and is at least 60% cleaner than the open fire. So what this picture really shows is that the partnership be cr created uh, with Dean's 30 years of experience working with stoves and going around the world trying to set up stove projects really culminates with the partnership that we've struck with the Shengzhou Stove Manufacturers. They have, uh, in China, in, in this region of China, they have a very rare, natural occurring uh, material, has a lot of diatomaceous earth, and it's mixed with other organic components to create a very uh, durable and abrasion resistant stove. But it was a long road for Dean to get there. Uh, when he started manufacturing stoves in 1976 in Guatemala after the earthquake there, uh, he manufactured a few hundred uh, solar cookers as well as a lot of uh, wood stoves. What he found, though, was that people were using the solar cookers as toilets uh, and, that, and that the wood stoves were worse than the open fire. So cooks with the solar, uh, <laughs> solar cookers that turned into toilets, they didn't like the stove. They weren't going to use it. Uh, the other part was that if the stoves weren't efficient, they weren't really 
doing anything for the people. They were it was actually making things worse off. So what he began to do was to work with cooks on a stove that they would use, and then utilize, utilize lab techniques uh, to measure the particulate matter, the CO2, and, and, and otherwise the greenhouse gases that come off the stove. And uh, over two years, worked with Mr. Shen at the stove manufacturing facility, making dozens of trips into India and Africa to be sure that cooks enjoyed the stove. Um, Stove Tech is a spin-off from the Upper Vacher Research Center, and what we do is work with communities and people around the world to distribute this, this cook stove. Uh, we work with people like the Millennium Villages Project, which is based in New York, uh, and uh, where they've, they import containers of stoves into Uganda. Uh, we also work with entrepreneurs in Nigeria that import about a container every other month as well. Um, and what we do as an organization is work with them a lot on the throughput and things that they can do to sell more stoves or to subsidize a stove or things like that. Uh, so whether it be carbon credit projects or microfinance or, some, or, or those types of things. Um, here's a picture of uh, a woman that's retailing the stove in, in Umarara outside of, outside of Kampala in Uganda. Here's uh, a picture of people leaving with a stove after a stove class. So it often requires the uh, educational hands-on component. Um, and then a uh, woman cooking with the stove. These are pancakes. <laughs> so um, how the stove works is basically uh, the stove comes all put together. But um, so this is the, the heart of the stove. It's a, it's a ceramic combustion chamber. Um, so this, is, uh, this will actually float on water, which is interesting to me. But uh, so that shows how insulative of a material it is. But uh, the, the other good part about it is that it's abrasion resistant as well and, and will stand up over time. So this stove, uh, the, the whole stove together will last two and a half to three years. Uh, we're working on some things to make it last longer, but that's actually quite a long time for a stove to last in the developing world. Um, the thing that's great about it is, uh, so it, it's very insulative and it gets hot enough inside so that it'll burn the, the greenhouse gases and the smoke uh, as, you're, as you're using it. Uh, the stove is 50% more efficient than cooking with the open fire um, as far as fuel use and 70% less emissions. And the beautiful thing is it costs eight bucks and arrives in this nice little box um, to allow for it to be easily distributed to cooks all over the place. And now what's nice about this, um, it is much cleaner and much more efficient than cooking with the open fire and, and very cheap, which is good. Uh, but it being 70% cleaner than the open fire is not a complete solution. So it reduces the incidence of pneumonia and things like that. But if you really want to uh, provide a full health solution, um, you need something that uh, will mix the flame and uh, the smoke inside. So what happens is basically the combustion chamber is kind of split into two parts inside is what effectively happens and it'll, the, it'll rotate that way but basically the flame will go on one side and the smoke will go on the other side. Uh, which So that's okay if you want to get 70% clean but if you want to get 100% of the way there or actually what ha it's 95% of the way there so you introduce a fan uh, so basically what happens is the fan forces the air and the, and the gases inside and the flame to mix. This stove will burn, what's interesting, it'll burn as clean as kerosene, but with wood as the fuel versus gas. So this is a stove you can take into your house and, and cook with and uh, not have problems. Um, so basically how it works, there's a, a few different ways to power something like this. Obviously you need a few watts to make a fan run. Photovoltaics, um, battery power, plug into the wall in a lot of locations. But um, the other way, and, and this is the way we've been pursuing it uh, with a group called BioLite, um, is to use thermoelectrics. So basically what happens is there's a copper rod inside here. Um, and that copper rod uh, basically harnesses enough energy from the flame to run a fan. Uh, so it's completely self-contained. It turns on when, when you're using it and turns off when you're done. Um, this costs, in total, about $20, uh, this being half the cost. Um, so it's, it's going to be a little harder to convince somebody to use something like this. But what we're working on is to something called cogeneration. So you can basically charge your cell phone uh, by cooking, um, which, is a, which is a nice new uh, creative thing that uh, we're pretty excited about. Um, so what's great is. Uh, Using science and engineering, we've created some stoves that 
that uh, are very efficient now, but that can be used by people in the future and totally eliminate the incidence of pneumonia and other dangerous things that happen to people. And uh, using entrepreneurship to pull it all together. Okay.